Hello everyone! My name is Evie Lupine. Welcome back to my channel and today I have another video for you all. Today we're going to be talking about power exchange because I feel like it's been a hot minute since we've gone into this in detail and there's one particular detail I want to go over. How you can build on and improve an existing DS or power exchange relationship. Now, when you go online these days, there are so many resources. If you want to know the basics about power exchange, what's a punishment? How do you form rules? What's a contract? What titles can you call people? What does it even mean to do power exchange? What is this whole BDSM thing about? So, so many resources for that. However, when it comes to more advanced topics, once you actually have the relationship, then suddenly it's just crickets. You want to know what to do when your power exchange needs are mismatched? What do you do when the shiny new car smell wears off after two months? What happens if you start doing BDSM and your fantasies don't really line up with reality and you maybe aren't as into it as you thought you would be? Nothing out there. Trust me, I looked. I tried every possible combination of improving power exchange relationship, making a better DS relationship, any of those couldn't find anything. So I am here to fill the gap and we're going to talk about how to make your DS or power exchange relationship better. Now, because of the fact I am going to be focusing on how to improve an existing relationship rather than creating one, this is going to be more of a 200 level topic instead of a 100 level topic. But even if you've never had a DS relationship before, I still think you should watch this because if you ever want to have one in the future, you are likely going to run into these roadblocks. And just having this knowledge in your back pocket, having these tools in your toolkit will make getting through those common mistakes, common first time problems so, so much easier. But before we get into what those tools are, I first wanna start with a definition because I don't know if this is the first video of mine you're ever watching. And I wanna make sure we're working from the same page, same definition. So when I say power exchange, I am referring to a consensual BDSM dynamic where one person, the S type, also called the submissive, is giving up power and or authority to their D type or dominant partner. There are a million ways to do this, all sorts of different role play flavors to it, like littles and pets and slaves. Don't get too hung up on that, this is a very general video. There's also many styles in terms of duration of the power exchange. The most common thing you'll see in media is a 24 seven relationship where that means that the power exchange is always on. Other people have different arrangements where it's only on the weekends or only in the bedroom. All of them equally valid, all of them totally, totally fine as long as it works for you. Also with power exchange, there are a few terms that get kind of used roughly interchangeably with power exchange. You'll see power dynamic, DS relationship, authority transfer. These all technically have slightly separate meanings from each other, but for the sake of this video, they all basically are referring to the same type of relationship broadly. On a final note, I did mention submissives and dominants. There are also people who are switches that can go between both roles that switch with each other and can have a power exchange relationship based off of that. All right, making sense so far? I hope so. I think as you can already tell just with these definitions so far, that there is a lot of variety within the way you can do your power exchange. You can be 24 seven, you can be bedroom only, you can be a switch, you can be a slave, you can be a pet, you can be a lot of different things. And that's what makes this so beautiful. So the first thing that I wanna say, the first thing that I see a lot of people make as a mistake, especially early on, is they try to fit their power exchange into a very particular mold. Like I already said, one of the key things you'll see online with power exchange representation is a 24 seven relationship. And there's lots of stereotypes kind of associated with that. And you'll kind of see, I would say on social media, three ish main types of DS relationships. You'll get like the bratty little, the obedient quiet slave and the bedroom submissive. And anything outside of that is kind of treated as like deviant or weird. And there's all kinds of really strange 
almost like purity testing that will be done where people go well if you're really a little you wouldn't do that a slave would never also be a pet a slave would never be bratty and people will beat themselves up over this and just bend themselves out of shape trying to fit themselves into one teeny tiny little box in order to be doing real power exchange and frankly i think this is even worse on the d type side because they basically only have one option which is cold distant, sadistic, you know, sort of older, rich guy in a suit type, or if it's not a male dominant, it's a female dominant with the same personality, but like wearing latex and lingerie holding a whip. Like there's not really any variety allowed. And if you're a dom who's more of a caregiver type, if you're more kind of like soft and gentle and leading quietly, a lot of people will perceive that as like not really being dominant or that you're really a service top or especially in the case of like caregivers that you're really actually just a service sub you're not even really a dom at all which again all of this to my mind is completely ridiculous and i do think there is some utility in having these like kind of broad stereotypical examples of power exchange in that it kind of gives you a rough approximation of what to expect from power exchange but i think ultimately at the end of the day it's more destructive than it's really good for i think i have heard so many stories of people that have spent three five ten years in a dynamic denying a core part of why they want to do bdsm because a real slave doesn't do this a real sub doesn't do that people panicking about topping from the bottom by mistake or being too bratty to just do that and just like looking over what would actually make their relationship happy for the sake of fitting into social expectations and i am here to tell you sincerely fuck all of that okay do what you want to do in your bdsm relationship be a slave pet little service sub if you want to be be an emotional sadist caregiver dom if you want to be be any combination of whatever you want and just realize that bdsm relationships are always evolving always changing it is very rare that the relationship you start when you're 20 is going to be the same when you're 30 or the relationship you started 10 years ago is going to be the same 10 years later that is just not part of how humanity and our development works and if you are exploring bdsm and you're trying new things it is only natural that your experience and your preferences are going to change the way that your bdsm relationship functions and so really just don't waste time trying to be in a dynamic that is not serving you if you really 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 want to be a pet but you're nervous your master is going to take it wrong is it better to get to explore to be a pet to even try to broach that question or deny your entire life and miss out on something that could have been really fun and beneficial for your relationship i always advocate for being brave and having those conversations with partners so you don't miss out on something that could be making both of you really happy and this goes not just for like roles or titles but also for the type of relationship i think a lot of people get into bdsm and especially power exchange assuming of course i'm gonna have a 24 7 dynamic that's like the only thing i've seen it's the pinnacle it's the best why would i want to do anything else differently and then you try it and then reality sets in after the shininess wears off and you go oh this is actually really difficult and not fun and more like chores and it makes me resent my partner maybe let's keep this bedroom only from now maybe let's only do it on the weekends because during the week i'm way too busy work school kids whatever can't keep up and it's only going to hurt our relationship if I can't keep up with existing obligations. And there's a really key part as well is don't overextend yourself on obligations in power exchange. It's so tempting to have like a 50 page rule book and I'm going off script right now for the record. I did not write this down, but stay with me here for a second. It is so common to want like the contract, like a capital C, you know, where it's like 50 pages, calligraphy, really high quality paper, and you write all of it up, you got all your rules, and then pfft, doesn't get followed at all, way too much work. The act of writing the contract was really hot, figuring out the rules was hot, it was good foreplay. 
but it didn't really actually do anything to serve your relationship. And honestly, if having a power exchange relationship where you have two rules, if that works for you, do it. If you wanna have 50 rules and you can maintain that long-term, go for it. But always build in mind for long-term stability. Now, if you have a relationship that is like a temporary six month, a year contract, and you don't think you're ever gonna wanna like re-up it again and you don't want to think you're you're gonna want to do the same thing again okay experiment do something real wild for six months but if you want to have a relationship with somebody that can last for 5 10 20 plus years keep in mind that suddenly committing to 50 things or 100 things every day for the rest of your life potentially is a really big ask. So don't be afraid to negotiate down once you have started a power exchange relationship. If you realize you have bitten off more than you can chew, it is not admitting defeat to rework that. It is working towards building a healthier, better relationship, which should be all of our goals. Now, speaking of talking to partners, and being on the same page with them, working out things. One thing I always recommend people do is relationship check-ins because yes, communication with your partner is super important. I know, broken record, everyone knows that, but how you communicate with your partner is important and making it a habit and a practice and not just like, oh, well, like I listen if they say a safe word. Like this goes deeper than that because communication is key in every type of relationship, but especially in BDSM where you are navigating without a lot of good guideposts because there's not really a lot of representation in mainstream media. This is not talked about like typically with your parents or like sex ed, you really have to kind of go it your own way. And because of that, there is so much potential danger for making mistakes and stepping on triggers and just again, over obligating yourself. And that is something you're going to need to check in on. And what I like about relationship check-ins is it gives you a space and the way that you should be doing it is to have a free and open space for both parts of a relationship, dom, sub, whatever, to talk to each other's equals about what is working and what is not in a relationship and to share ideas about what you wanna do together. This is not just like a relationship report card where it's like you got an A plus in doing the dishes and you got a C minus in remembering to check out the trash or whatever. It's not about like keeping score and like getting a space to be like, well, you did this, well, you did this, well, you did this. And the opposite of that should be what this space is for open, honest communication about what is working and what is not. Be that, you know, new ideas for rules, scenes you wanna do, debriefing after a scene, talking about where you want this relationship to go, checking in about your goals and values. It can even be as simple as just proposing calling your partner mommy sometimes instead of ma'am. It doesn't have to be a big, scary sit down thing. It can be a casual conversation over coffee. It can be something you talk about over lunch or on a walk or something, as long as you are talking. When you are first starting off in a relationship, I would say to do this, especially with power exchange, ideally every week, but probably every two weeks, just to have space to talk about how things are feeling, how things are going and checking in as needed. Now, this doesn't mean that you wait for like a week or two weeks or a month before you talk, bring things up as they come up, but having time set aside for this in more mature relationships, maybe if you've been doing this for like six months, go to like doing it every month, maybe every couple months, having a space where you can mindfully talk about things can be a really big benefit because you know, this is a time where I can bring these things up and it might make you think about things in a way you wouldn't typically if you were just kind of doing things ad hoc and not really having that aware time of we have a space to talk about this in. And when you are having these conversations where you have these relationship check-ins, I think one core component for a DS relationship is to have emotional vulnerability. It's kind of taken as a given in DS relationships that a submissive will be completely emotionally transparent with their partner, that the partner maybe even ha has access to their phone, text messages, their passwords, their email, even their diary, maybe even listening in on their therapy sessions, which I don't recommend any of that, but you know, 
people are going to do what they're going to do. And you don't have to have that to have emotional vulnerability, but a lot of people treat BDSM sometimes as this like one-sided relationship where the dom knows everything about the submissive and the submissive knows nothing about the dom. To the point where it can even be like a fantasy aspect for some people, like the dom is this kind of like unknowable, untouchable, like superior being. And I get why that would be appealing and hot for a lot of people, absolutely. But in the practical reality of having a relationship with somebody where typically if you are intertwined romantically, life-wise in some fashion, you know, sharing finances, sharing a home, etc., you're gonna see the real part of your partner outside of their role in your DS relationship. You're gonna see the ugliness and the crying and the mistakes and the messes. And I've talked about this before in terms of like people having like Dom disillusionment syndrome. And this is very much like part of that conversation. But I do really think that Doms would also benefit from, from being vulnerable from their end as well and letting their partner into their fears, insecurities, worries, struggles, be that within the relationship or outside of that, depending on what it is you want to bring up and talk about in that space. But I think having that vulnerability of sharing like this makes me nervous, I'm scared about this, actually lays a really good foundation for building bonding and trust in the relationship. Because when you know that your partner is honest with you about their feelings instead of just pretending they're like a stoic mountain all the time go, oh my gosh like they really want me to know how they feel they care about me they're, they're thinking about these things and I just like all perfect you know pre-planned you know just like oh just doing whatever I want not thinking about it at all like, this impacts them and so having that bonding and trust that mutual vulnerability allows to grow is a really key thing for having, I think, a good sustainable DS relationship where because you already know these things about your partner, it's not gonna throw you for a loop one day when they get diagnosed with an illness or they get really sick for a couple of weeks or they become unemployed or something like that. If you build up your dom in your head to be this like perfect being that doesn't ever make mistakes, it's going to really, really disturb the dynamic when life actually ends up happening. So basically, in other words, don't treat your dom as a fetish dispenser without feelings and you will probably have a much better longer term DS relationship. On a completely different note from that, pretty much whatsoever, I'm going to share my hottest take for this video, which would be reconsidering the use of punishments in your dynamic. Now, this is not going to be for everyone, but I have consistently found through interviews, conversations, people I know in real life, that punishments are very much a hate it or love it thing in long-term DS. I know, I think maybe one person that has a long-term DS relationship where they have punishments because punishments are not the only way to have a power exchange relationship reinforced. Like a lot of people see, especially with the ubiquity of it in media about this, that like in order to have a DS relationship, you have to have punishments. And that means, you know, when everything looks like a nail or whatever was that phrase, if when all you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. Like when your only tool is punishment, everything has to be punished for and you lose the ability to use all of those other wonderful behavior modification techniques that you can use that typically work better than punishment. A lot of people are very motivated in BDSM by punishment, but not everyone is. And I think you really need to check in with yourself on a regular basis when you are using punishments about how it actually makes you feel. Yes, there could be temporary fear and apprehension because of the punishment, but if you notice like longer term fear, if you notice that this is giving you anxiety in your relationship, you feel afraid of your partner, you are hiding things because you don't wanna be discovered and punished for that because that's what oftentimes leads from punishments is not reduction of behavior, but hiding of behavior. That is a big red flag to check in and reconsider maybe using other things in your relationship instead because I have found through my own relationships that oftentimes punishment isn't really what works, it just causes more issues. And finally, my biggest piece of advice for this video is to not coast in your DS relationship. 
it is so, so easy to follow the rules. In the first like four weeks was your first ever DS BDSM relationship. You got all these hot rules, so amazing, so wonderful. You can't believe you finally get to do this. And then suddenly, again, starts to become kind of mundane. The exciting, amazing spanking you used to get every Friday becomes just another typical Friday, right? everything starts to kind of fall by the wayside. And instead of being propelled by this infatuation with this new relationship style, suddenly, and eh, do I really have to do the dishes this way? Do I really have to put the boots here? Do I really need to fold the towels in this exact way? And kind of slide and then the submissive stops doing certain things and the dom stops enforcing them. So the submissive stops doing even more things, then suddenly you're back to regular, regular vanilla life and where did the BDSM go? And that kind of relationship degradation creep is so, so common in DS relationships and only just in terms of like, you kind of just let all of the rules go away, but also especially in like really long-term DS relationships where you've been doing the same thing for a long time without any kind of like shaking of things up you get people that do the rules and are just kind of going through the motions. And make no mistake, sometimes with certain things, we really want those rules to become new habits to where we don't really think about them anymore, like flossing our teeth, taking vitamins, you know, having an underwear check-in before going to work, whatever it is, those things becoming habit can be a good and positive thing. But when you are going through the entire relationship that same way of just like, oh, this is what I do, this is what I do, this is a habit, this is a routine, and you're not doing it in a mindful fashion, then you're losing that aspect of like, what really makes DS work in a mental capacity. And I think the way that you solve this, the way that you avoid getting into coasting in your relationship is to take tiny moments of remembering to do things mindfully. Also, really good for your brain, really good for your anxiety to just like mindfully focus on a particular task. So instead of just like folding the towels real quickly, just go, oh, it's getting done, whatever, who cares, I'm doing my task. Really think about like mindfully folding the towel in a precise way and really making sure all the corners are even thinking about like, wow, I am doing this service for my dominant and it's pleasing for my dominant for these towels to be fresh and smell clean to be folded in this precise way and he will be proud of me they will be proud of me if i fold it in this particular fashion on the dom side this might look like more like meaningful mindful physical touch like maybe if you normally like hug your partner when you come home from work maybe you put your hand behind their neck and lean down and whisper good girl or good boy or good pet to them when you come home and just have a little like tiny moments of reinforcing the relationship because as you build on this and you have more of these like tiny DS wins where you are really investing in the relationship again, you'll do more and you'll do more because it will feel good to do more. You will want to do more things because those tiny mindful moments will remind you why you wanted to do DS in the first place. And this really does take both partners working together to make this function. And when you build in the mindfulness in your relationship in the same way that it being monotonous became routine, that mindfulness can instead become routine. I think I've really seen this in a couple of like older BDSM couples where there's just like this serenity of like mindful awareness. That sounds like very woo, but it's like, it's the vibe, it's the vibe I get, where you have people that are just like, so in routine, but also still so aware of their BDSM relationship on a moment to moment basis that they just, there is this calm and comfort and beauty that comes with that. You can literally, you can almost see it on their faces, the relaxation and the comfort of the knowledge of their relationship and knowing their dynamic and knowing their place. And I think that is really worth striving for and working towards. So basically the point with this is get those little tiny wins, build on that because as you get more energy from getting those tiny DS wins, you can build that into doing more things, new rules, better scenes, more power change, more generally, just having that feeling back in your relationship again. And all of that being said, that's everything I really wanted to share today. I know I probably didn't go in the typical direction that people might expect because I feel like the knee-jerk kind of reaction to this is like, add more rules, do more rituals, do more scenes, you know, beg harder. <laughs> like 
that totally works. But it's kind of obvious, right? Like, I think a lot of people try to fix their power exchange by just adding more on top. It's like, oh, like this pizza doesn't taste good. So instead of like thinking about how I baked it, I'm gonna add more toppings and more sauces and more cheese. And then eventually you've got a mountain of like 60 different things on one pizza and then it's like not even edible anymore. So I don't advise just like layering and layering and layering. It's about having that underlying mindfulness first. And then once you have that mindfulness, then you can really start to grow and blossom, I think. But anyways, power change, BDSM, all of that good stuff. I would love to know your thoughts about this in a comment down below. If you have had especially like a longer term power exchange relationship, I would love to know your thoughts in a comment down below. What have you done to improve your power exchange before? What worked for you? What didn't? Let me know. Anything that I said in this, do you agree with, disagree? Expand your thoughts. Again, let me know in a comment down below. If you did enjoy this, if you're not already, please do subscribe. I do this twice a week, but all sorts of kink and BDSM related topics. And finally, if you want to support me to do, the best way you can do that is with Patreon. A link to that will be down below. We've been doing some really fun content over there. I do exclusive videos at least once a month over there. I've been doing get ready with me videos. I did a blowjob deep throat training video recently as well and I just have lots of fun things in the works over there we do movie nights we have a discord chat lots of fun things so please check it out in the description box down below if you do already support over there thank you so so much it means the absolute world to me and until I see you all next time I hope you have a great rest of your day and a great rest of your week bye bye